it's great pleasure for me this evening to hand over to Dr. Talalika, who is from the Menopause Clinic London, as is Professor Manyonga. We're delighted to have them, as Katie mentioned, as our clinical partners. We've been working closely with them for some years. Fantastic. So I'll hand over to Dr. Talalika to take us through a, a, a brief talk. Vikram. Thank you, Roger. Thank you, Katie. Um, so nice to see many of you here. Um, so it's always always a, a good start for the first uh, meeting that we are having. Um, I'm going to start with summarizing some of the things which we put into a paper which we published last year. Uh, that was when the pandemic was into its third or fourth month. And what we did was to summarize all the studies and the research that had been done so far in relation to how COVID affects women and also why it affects women more as compared to men. So I'll start quickly with figures. Um, the first slide basically shows you uh, that if you look at the figure and the risk of uh, severe illness and admission to the ITU for men versus women, is that there is much, much higher risk, 2.84 odds ratio, so higher risk for men as compared to women. And this is across countries uh, across the world. And so you always find that men are likely to develop severe illness and likely to be admitted to intensive care as compared to women, there's much higher risk. So the question is, why is that uh, coming through? Why is such a statistical bias being seen? Consistency? So when we try to look at the data so far and the inferences and the theories behind why women may have less severe disease, why they may be protected against the uh, worst case scenario. There are five things that come to mind and five things that have been looked into so far with all the research that's happened. I must say that everything is in its infancy um, in the sense that most of these studies are observational. There are many theoretical possibilities expressed and there is a need for robust research until we can pinpoint what it is and whether it is the estrogen or some of its metabolites that actually cause this difference between the response. But so far, there are five factors which seem to be important. The first of all, of course, is the lifestyle choices. So it is well known that the incidence of things such as smoking, uh, alcohol intake is much higher in men as compared to women across the world. And of course, these are lifestyle choices which influence response to any infection, how the immune status of the person will be. So smoking, excess alcohol intake, um, be, uh, sort of unhealthy diet, um, ex extra lipids, uh, high lipids in the blood, diabetes, all those lifestyle and diet related uh, diseases will have an influence in terms of how a person uh, fights a, a disease. And therefore, that's one possibility that you always have higher burden of disease in men. The second one is chronic disease. Again, heart disease, lung disease, COPD, pulmonary disease, chronic disease is higher in men across the world as compared to women. In fact, estrogen is one of the things that actually drives down heart disease in women. So because there is less chronic disease in men, less chronic disease in women, sorry, you will find that they'll probably have a level of protection against many infection, not just COVID. And that may be the second possibility, which may be bringing down the disease burden. Chromosomes matter. So the genetic makeup is the third thing. Women have 46XX chromosomes, men 46XY. So women, because they have the extra X chromosome, will have some influence on their immunity, which is beneficial because the X chromosome is known to contain about 79 to 80 immune related genes. These are the ones which modify the behavior of multiple immune factors. And we'll have a look in the next slide in a minute, but it's the immune cells, how the immune cells react to pathogens, how many chemicals they produce, what sort of beneficial response is produced to a particular uh, infection. That's all controlled by many, many genes on X chromosome. And it's thought that it's the double X chromosome structure uh, that gives a lot of benefits in terms of immune response to women. 
Now we have estrogen. That's what we are here to talk about. So estrogen is no doubt an immune modulating hormone. Hormones have multiple functions in the body. It's maintaining the reproductive organs. It's maintaining health, energy, libido, etc. So many. But the more important bit today will be focus on immunity because estrogen does modulate number of things. It modulates neutrophils. It modulates lymphocytes. It modulates monocytes. These are all key cells in the body which fight infections and cancer. You've got influence on chemicals, cytokines, what sort of inf uh, inflammatory response you develop to a particular infection. That all is controlled by estrogen. So that's key because that's going to determine whether you develop severe symptoms and what your risk of severe illness or death is. So that's considered to be a key factor in why the disease is not so severe in women. And of course, the last one will be some indirect effects of estrogen, because as we said before, less chronic disease. Estrogen is very important. It maintains good bone health. It maintains good heart health. It lowers cholesterol. It reduces risk of coronary heart disease and diabetes. It's very good for brain. And all in all, it means that usually it will have a favorable impact on the metabolic profile of the person. So you're less likely to have coronary heart or other problems, which will improve your defense against any stress on the body, such as COVID infection. So these are the five key areas which have been looked into by different studies and are thought to be the reasons why women uh, defend this disease favorably or better. And of course, estrogen is the one that we focus on.